Tens visit to Pittsburgh for President Trump, met by a mix of protesters and mourners as he and the First Lady paid their respects to the 11 people killed in that synagogue shooting. The scene, one more sign of how divided our nation has become. Our senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, has the story. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. That's right. It was such a study in contrast. There was President Trump performing the hard duty his predecessors had done so often, comforting a shattered community in a grieving country. But even in that moment, as you point out, neither he nor the country could escape the political bitterness that's dividing the nation under this president. Protesters packed the blocks around the Tree of Life synagogue as a somber President Trump paid his respects at the ceremony he called very sad, very moving. Mourners lined the area just outside the Pittsburgh synagogue to remember those who lost their lives in Saturday's massacre. There, President Trump and the First Lady were joined by Ivanka Trump and son-in-law Jared Kushner. Ivanka converted to Judaism the faith of her husband and their three children. Following Jewish custom, the first family placed stones at each of the stars near the synagogue, memorializing the dead. Right there with them, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers, who escaped the gunfire that killed 11 that Saturday morning. But throughout the somber memorial, the protests continued, with demonstrators gathered in the neighborhood nearby shouting at the president, saying, words matter. You don't belong here. This is our neighborhood. Uh, and one of the families, <clears throat> excuse me, reportedly declined to meet with the president. Uh, the Washington Post is saying that Daniel Stein, the family of Daniel Stein, a 71-year-old man who was going to be a grandfather before he was killed, uh, did not want to attend the ceremony with the president because they said of his comments on guns after the attack. George? And, and Terry, with less than a week to go into the midterms, the president doing everything he can to put the focus on in immigration in these final days. This latest idea floating the idea that he can use an executive order to do away with the Constitution's guarantee that if you're born here, you're a citizen. That's drawn a real backlash, even from the Republican House Speaker, Paul Ryan. Well, you obviously cannot do that. Uh, you cannot end birthright citizenship with an executive order. We didn't like it when Obama tried changing immigration laws via executive action, and I think in this case the 14th Amendment is pretty clear. Yeah, Terry, you've covered the Supreme Court for years. The 14th Amendment is simple and clear. It is. That's the majority opinion on the Supreme Court several times, which has ruled on this general area that if you are born in the United States and subject to its laws, you are a citizen. Uh, President Trump and a minority of scholars believe uh, that if you're born to a mother here unlawfully, you aren't subject to the laws. But as I said, the Supreme Court's taken a look in this area and found the other way. George Terry Moran, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.